Hey everyone, I hope you're having a great day. And today on this video, we're gonna talk about RV decor, decorating your RV. Keep watching. I'm Bill. I'm Kelly. And this is our This adventure. is our adventures. Oh. Here we go. Everybody has liked my RV organization for a small space. If you hadn't watched the last week's video, watch that. So I wanted, I was trying to figure out another video to do this week and I decided to do RV decor because a lot of people have a ton of questions about decorating your RV and I know everybody's style is totally different because me, I'm kind of like farmhouse meets log cabin feel that's that's kind of my decor style but i just want to just tell you what i've done like what i used to decorate how i've decorated what i've decided to change what i hadn't decided to change just because i think this is something a lot of people are searching for and that's the reason i decided we're gonna do this video Let's start running around the camper and showing you what I've done to decorate our camper. The exciting part of YouTube, I just started editing my footage that I had recorded yesterday. And when I talked about the kitchen and the bathroom, the camera locked up and it was a still video with me talking. You could hear me talking. So I just go put my same other shirt on like, but anyway, so let me redo this part and I hope I do it as good as I did yesterday because I felt like yesterday I did it really well. So we're going to start here in the kitchen. I opted not to paint my cabinets or anything just because I had painted them in my house about 10 years ago and after about four or five years, they just started wearing and I'm not in love with them anymore and I'm not opposed to this color at all. I figured I would lighten it up in other ways. I know a lot of people paint their cabinets and stuff. And if these were like messed up or anything, I might would consider it look good. I think so. And it kind of goes with my log cabin feel. What I did here in the kitchen is I put up this peel and stick tile, which I absolutely love this stuff. This is like, it looks so real. I've had so many people walk in our camper and really think that I put up real tile. This tile was so hard to do. And if you haven't watched this video, you can go watch it. I recorded me putting this up and this was really hard. And what made this so hard was the window. And I really wanted to unscrew and take this flange off, but I was scared if I did that, the whole window would fall out. I just ended up just trying to cut and get it to work going around it. Now, when I started with this, it had louver blinds here that got grease all of them and they were nasty and the dust stuck to them. And I absolutely hated those blinds. So I took those blinds off and then I installed this header and then I made the curtains, which we'll talk about the curtains a little bit later in this video. So if I wanna make it where people can't see in, I can close this, but while I'm cooking, but I, most of the time, I would say probably 90% of the time it stays over there, but I really love this tile. It lightened up and made this whole area look so much different and added that pop of color that I really like. Another thing, I have a lady that's doing our cutting boards and she's making me a big cutting board to put on top of this and it's going to have like our logo in it and it's going to be in color. But what I'm gonna do with this cutting board is when I'm not using it, I can flip it up against the window so that if anything greasy or anything splatters on it, I can just wipe it off. Cause it's still a little hard to get off of this window because you <laughs> gotta move the screen and all this. So it just, it makes it a little more hard to clean this window. But that's what I'm gonna do to fix that. But it's gonna be March before she can get that done because, because it's gonna be in color and she's got to do She's getting like a special program or they're doing something. Anyway, it can't be done till March, but I'll update you once I get that in. The tile here in the bathroom, I did it before I did the kitchen and I loved it in here so much that I decided to put it in the kitchen. 
This wasn't near as hard. It was a little bit hard because of the curve because the towel kind of wanted to angle up so it's not like flush around the bottom and I, st I still need to put some trim on this and caulk it. I haven't done that and I've done this like a year ago but I need to finish doing that because that really, I did it in the kitchen. I caulked it and it just made the seams disappear. I mean like it looked really good and this stuff has stuck really good. I haven't had any of it to even peel down or come down and it's and I didn't have to admit I really didn't prep the walls at all <laughs> for it and it, the tile I love this tile and it's a great way to add a pop of color and if you end up not liking it you just peel it off and it's done. Now we're coming up here to the bedroom to talk about peel and stick wallpaper. This stuff can either be good or it can be bad. <laughs> That's what happens after three years. It is rolling off the wall. <laughs> and uh, this is like, this bedroom is our next project that I'm fixing to do after we get back from Steamboat. But I'm taking down the balances. I'm taking down the curtains in here. This peel and stick wallpaper is coming down. You're going to have to hit the subscribe button to see what I replace it with. I'm so excited about this product. It's actually on its way here now. My bed's a mess because this is all coming out. Um, I think I've told y'all we're changing. I'm changing. I'm <laughs> changing this into a king size bed. I'm redoing all this and the window treatments in here. And uh, it's going to look totally different and it's going to be cool. So stay tuned for that. But wallpaper, I don't know if it's because we're from the south and the humidity, it, 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 it has never stuck perfect. I have put up some that's around the TV, behind the TV, and it has stuck great. And it was a different brand than this one. This one, I, I got this at Walmart. And that one I ordered off of Amazon. And um, it just, it stuck but it was on wood rather than this walls. So I don't know if that's the difference or what, but this just didn't stick. And I see all kinds of people on Facebook talking about it sticking, not sticking, it's sticking, not sticking. You prepped it, you didn't prep it. I think it's either gonna stick or not. I don't think there's a, oh, hey, let me prep and see. Now, I'm gonna start talking about curtains. I'm gonna talk about what curtains I have up here and it's not that I hate them or don't like them, but when I redid the bedroom, I put them in because I thought it was going to be the best option. But now, since we are fixing to redo this whole area, I'm going to end up doing blackout shades because I'm going to take all of this down and put out blackout shades and I'm not going to have any curtains. Because I wish, I don't know why, why would Grand Design, and, and it may be other companies too, I don't know, this is just because we have a Grand Design. We have blackout shades all in the den area. But the bedroom where you sleep, where you would like it to be blackout, it's got these cheap waffle things, blinds. I don't know what they are, but like why? But that's why I changed out the curtain, or I added the curtains up here. And I recovered the um, balances because I didn't like how they looked up here. But now this is all about to be gone. All right, so the window treatments down here, I ended up taking painter's tarps. What I did is I took a whole painter's tarp, and let me move this around, let me, let, let, let's go over here. <laughs> I took a whole painter's tarp and I washed them. And there's only one brand that works, or not, not that works, but these just feel like fabric. And it's called duck cloth. And uh, so I ended up taking a full one. It's like that wide and that tall. And it already has its original hem on the sides and the bottom. And I just cut them in half and put a pocket in the top of them. Tension rods. <laughs> but I just ended up hemming a pocket in the top. So that way the only place that it's hemmed is up at the top where it's hidden and you're not going to see it because I didn't want to have to hem all the way around all these curtains because that would like absolutely drive me crazy and I just cut these in half. There was probably a three foot or two or three wasted space in between them all but I've actually used all that fabric um, with just projects that I've done around the house and you could even recover your seats or something. I mean like you could use something with that fabric. Well you just put this back up 
And you want to make sure that you're all the way to this side. And I have them pretty tight because I don't want them to cut them down when you're pulling on them. But that way you can still work. Your black hat shades will work fine. They, it doesn't affect the curtains. But so I did these curtains because mine had the like the little balance, the little side pieces. And what I didn't like about the little side pieces was they were basically for looks and I didn't like the way they looked. Where now, if we're in the camper and it's a pretty day outside and I want to still let the light in, but not let anybody see in, this does the trick. And it really makes it bright. I guess because it's the light color, it makes it brighter in here as well. These curtains, this was probably one of the first few mods that I made and I love that. But the, the another thing that I did, I took out the dinette, dinette table and four chairs that were here and I ended up making this table and you can see the video. I did a video on that. But I made this table myself. No one helped me. I did it all by myself. But I love this table. It opened up this whole space. It made it where there was more room. And we actually use this way more than we use the table that was there. What I love about this is before when I was sitting at the table, I would be like facing in. But I can look out and see because like when we were in Destin, they, uh, the dolphins were outside the camper. And I, I could see them. I mean, if I had been sitting at my other desk, I probably wouldn't have looked and saw them. So this desk is definitely a decor item that I've enjoyed. You gotta remember when you're doing decor in your camper, I just changed out the uh, fabric on these chairs. They were like a fabric that I didn't like and I had made the ottoman, but I had the fabric that I made it with and I put them in the ch on the chairs. And this was an easy, easy like anybody can do kind of decor change that you could do because you just took the seat off, you took a piece of fabric, you cut the size you need, you took a staple gun, stapled it, and then closed it up. Now when you're doing decor items, you've got to really think about how many things you want laid out or put out because on travel days, you're gonna have to pack all this stuff up. You can't leave it out. But if you get some museum putty, all my lamps are put down with museum putty and this thing is down. Like, if I wanted it up, you you have to like get something and scoot up up under it and peel it off. And when it comes up now, it's been down for it's been down for like two years now, so I don't know if it's still messed it up. But I've taken some of these, pulled them up after a year, and it didn't hurt the wood at all or didn't do anything. Now I can't promise that it'll keep doing that, but it doesn't. But just like this little piece that I have in the corner. It's stuck down with museum putty, so I don't have to move it on moving day. My lamp over there on next to the uh, couch, it's stuck down with museum putty. I have a couple of decor pieces in the bedroom that are stuck down with museum putty. If it's a plate, if it's something that actually has a good flat bottom, you can put it down with museum putty. Oh, even my clock, let me show you. The clock, it doesn't have to be changed up underneath, and I stuck it down with museum putty so it won't fall off. And then this shelf is put up because this is nothing heavy. It's put up with command strips. Now, for me, all my pictures and everything that are in here, they're put up with command strips. I have to say, I've had some fall, some stay. So there is really no rhyme or reason to why one might fall or one might stay. It's just weird. But I try to do, I think it's the 16 pound command strips. I go with the heaviest ones, command strips that you can find to hang stuff. And those seem to work a lot better. The only thing is, is on command strips, like, but some of them have like a rough wood back. And so to keep the command strip on the actual item so it wouldn't peel off of it, I just took it a staple gun and stapled it to the back of the picture and then stuck it to the wall and that has worked really good. But this wall over here, I wanted to kind of do like places that we went and liked. I mean, this is a lot of Colorado over there because we enjoy going to Colorado. But this one I got in Helen, Georgia and it didn't have, I love the sign because it said Adventure Awaits, but it didn't have Helen, Georgia on it. So I just hand wrote it up underneath it to give it the Helen, Georgia so I know where it came from. 
But yeah, all my pictures are hung with command strips. And I've only had like a few of them fall, not very many. And even behind here, they're all hung up with command strips. Now, this piece is decor and it is storage. So it's just decor because it's pretty and it adds like something, but then you can pull the top up and I made this myself. I found the crate and I added feet to it and then I made the top out of some plywood and stuff that I had. And um, I love this piece. We use it a lot and it's great for storage and everything. Another thing that people do for decor pieces is they use blankets to decorate and change colors. I ended up doing a blanket here just for the dog so that they wouldn't mess up the leather ever if they did. But a cool trick to putting a blanket on here and making it stay is a, a foam noodle. It's not like 100%, but it is like, I would say 80% better than having nothing. <laughs> It'll still sometimes work its way out. Definitely is way better because the blanket before I used the noodle, <laughs> literally I would sit down and it would just come straight off. Like it wouldn't even stay. Now, I mean, it stays pretty good. It does come undone, but not like all the time. And so just a cheap Dollar Tree poo noodle and <laughs> keeps your blanket on the bottom. I have one saved in my Amazon page that it's actually a slip cover for the couch. And I've almost wanted to do that to lighten this space up by getting like a lighter colored one that I could pull off and wash. And if it gets dirty, I can throw it away and just be done with it. So that is something that you can do is you can get covers for your actual furniture and that will help you change the decor without actually hurting or doing anything. Another thing that I did to change the decor without like actually messing up or hurting anything, this had glass in it and you could see into the pantry and I just, it had like these little lines. It, I just, I didn't like it. So I ended up putting, this is pill and stick chalk board paper, I guess is how you, wallpaper, I guess. But anyway, this is pill and stick. Like you could write on this with chalk sticks or chalk and it would be fine. But I wanted it to have that kind of chalky look. And then I had a friend of mine make the word pantry and put on it because that's how I wanted it to look. But you can do simple things like the, if I ever like don't want this, it just peels right out and it's done. You haven't hurt anything on the actual camper because I know a lot of y'all have husbands that are going, you're not changing, you're not doing, because <laughs> my husband, he's one of those people. But I did, I did that here and then over here was some peel and stick wallpaper that I got off of Amazon. It was peel and stick wallpaper and I put it up in the bathroom before I put up the tile and it ended up peeling off the walls in there, but it was pretty, I loved it. Well, I didn't have a lot of it left, but this again was some of the, that glass and I didn't like that you could see in there. So I put this up here and I wish I had enough left. There's three little glass ones above the fireplace. I want this above the fireplace, but I don't want to buy a whole nother roll just to put it up above the fireplace. But see, that's another thing. Like you don't have to paint to lighten things up. You can get the pill and stick wallpaper and it works really good on this glass. It stays <laughs> better than the wall. I, I like, I like to do in this just because it changed the way it looked. But if I didn't want it or if somebody else didn't want it, you could just peel it off and it would be done. These, that's like simple ways of changing things. Now, when it comes to rugs in your RV, for this particular space, I ended up going with a five by seven because I wanted it to go up under the chairs. The chairs are sitting on it, so it keeps it from sliding around or moving or anything. But there's a lot of people that have done the three by fives and it looks good. It was just not what I was looking for. But when it comes to the rug, every, I see so many people asking what size. It will not sit here without one under the chairs. But that's what I wanted because I didn't want it to, the dogs come running in here and slide across and then bundle it all up. And it would keep it flat if it was up under the chairs. So that's how I anchor mine was the, with the chairs. Another thing over here, when you sat here in the mornings, you didn't have a place to put your coffee. 
and you could put it over here, but then you're having to like reach back. I found these cute little, little they're little stools at five below, and I think these were like three dollars, four dollars. They weren't much. I got two of them, and these are great because they're multi-use. Because we'll use them in here, but then if we're outside sitting, we'll take them out there and use them out there as well. So, and they're really lightweight, and people could sit on these as well because it could be like a little mini bar stool. But these are great little decor pieces that you can use. I stack them when we travel, and that way it all gets put up. I'll put some pictures examples, but a lot of people take and put like little hanging macrame baskets and stuff, and they'll put fruit and stuff in it. So that way it's pretty, and you can actually function to do something. But I love the little baskets hanging, but I just can't quite figure out where I would put them. Now, this piece here is both decorative and useful because I pin all the places that we go in our camper. This is like, so what I'm going to end up doing, I am working on getting pictures to put up here, like some of our favorite pictures from our trips. And I'm going to end up doing this wall in that. And I think it's going to be really cool because this is our map and that's our map wall. Sometimes you buy things that don't work. <laughs> I have a rug here that I got and I was gonna put it down here. I was gonna put it down here, like right in here. And after I left it there for a little while, I didn't like it. So I ended up pulling it up. And a lot of people put rugs all over the floor, but we just have the one big rug. This is another piece that I made I bought the two boxes. I went to the lumber store and got the little tuba twos and then I found these little legs. These legs are actually outside corners for like baseboard, <laughs> but they look like they're made with the little tuba twos. And I just screwed this together and now I made a little place to put our slippers and then little miscellaneous items. Another thing that's function and decor was this piece here. It's my makeup station. It keeps my mirror in here and then my makeup and then I have place for my jewelry. And then you can just hang the little necklaces. You can put earrings here and then you can put rings in there. Now this, I consider it as decor, but a functional piece. It had the box. I added the part that says Splenda, which has started to fall off, but and sugar and then bought the little containers to put in it. But I like it sitting out here because we get in the Splenda and the sugar when we're fixing our coffee a lot. But yet it's cute and it's pretty. And then I got the little coffee pot. And then this piece here, I had another piece here that had plates and stuff and it ended up just being too crowded. So I found like this cute little small one and it fits there perfect. It has like my straws, forks, knives, and our paper plates in it when we use those. But that's what I, I just, I like functional decor too. It probably takes me just to get my decor up. You're probably five to 10 minutes to get my decor up. So I could only imagine some of these campers, but some of them are so pretty. I wish I was decorative like that kind. That it's, um, it's, there's so much more I want to do. It just takes time and you just kind of do it as you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed this decor video and kind of what I've done to decorate my camper. I hope that you learned something from it or got some ideas from it because by no means am I like a really decorative person, but I just wanted to kind of give you like what I've done to decorate my camper. If you have any cool tips, just give me a comment down in the comment section and tell me what y'all have done or what you may have learned that you think would be cool that I'd like to know about. Well, we are about ready to head for our trip. Remember, hit that subscribe button because we have some great, we have some travel coming up and I have my bedroom remodel coming up that you might want to watch. You might learn some things from that as well. Till next time, like and subscribe.